and welcome back to Reading Club. So today, I'm going to start a new book. It's called Daisy and the Trouble with Giants. It's the same Daisy series, and I'm going to read you chapter 1 to chapter 5. <clears throat> chapter 1. The trouble with giants is they shouldn't live at the top of magic beanstalks. If giants didn't live at the top of magic beanstalks, then what happened today wouldn't have happened in the first place. Or the second place. Or any of the places in Nanny and Grampy's garden. Nanny wouldn't have got cross. Mom wouldn't have got cross. Grampy wouldn't have got cross. No one would have got cross. You can't blame me if magic beans don't sparkle. Magic beans would be really easy to spot if they did sparkle like magic, but they don't, which isn't my fault. Chapter 2. I'd love to meet a real giant. Giants have giant shoes with giant buckles, giant clothes with giant buttons, giant front doors with giant doorbells, and inside their castles, they have giant tables with plates full of giant food. If I was a giant, I'd eat crunchy creams as big as <coughs> tractor tires, and i keep them in a biscuit tin as big as a house. If I wanted a drink, I wouldn't pour my orange squash into a glass. I'd pour it into a swimming pool. And then I'd drink it with a huge giant straw. I reckon a giant straw would be as long as a ladder at least. Even longer, probably. Maybe even as long as two <clears throat> drain pipes. I bet a giant could empty a swimming pool of orange squash in about two sucks. One suck if it was lemonade, because lemonade is the best drink in the world. Meeting a giant for real would be so good. He could pick me up and put me on his shoulder and we could go everywhere together. We'd have giant adventures and everything. When we got thirsty, we could drink giant lemonades, and when we got hungry, we could eat giant crunchy creams. Or custard creams, I don't really mind. That's another trouble with giants. They get really hungry and really thirsty, which is why they go fee-fi-fo-fum. The trouble with saying fee-fi-fo-fum is only giants should be allowed to say it. Otherwise, it can end up getting quite rude. In story time at school on Friday, Zach Beatrice said fee fi fo foom really loudly. And then he said, Daniel Bannis is a stinky bum. Which rhymes, but it isn't very nice. Mrs. Peters, our teacher, doesn't like it if you shout out in class. Especially if you shout fee fi fo fum, Daniel <clears throat> Banus is a stinky bum. She said if Zach Beatrice didn't say sorry to Danielle Ban Banus straight away, then there wouldn't be any more story times on a Friday ever again for any of us. Which is really unfair because why should me and all my friends not get any more stories just because of what Zach Beatrice said? That's the trouble with Zach Beach Whistle. He can't control his words, especially during story time. The trouble with story times at school is we only get one story. I wish we got a hundred stories, and I wish all the stories were about giants. Mrs. Peters is really good at reading stories. She does different voices and everything. When my mom reads me stories at bedtime, she does the same voices for everything. So like if there's a princess and a prince in the story, they have the same sounding voice, even when one's a man and one's a woman, which isn't right really. Mrs. Peters does princess voices, prince voices, king voices, witch voices, wolf voices, and even frog voices. My mom just does mom voices. But I do still like her reading stories to me. 
On Friday, Mrs. Peters read us the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. It was really good, except for when Jack Beach whistled started fee fi fo fooming all over the place. The story of Jack and the Beanstalk has got all sorts of really exciting things in it, like the giant, he's the best bit, and a hen that lays golden eggs, and a harp that sings all by itself, and golden treasure, and a magic beanstalk, plus a really sharp axe. Mrs. Peters did all the voices and everything, apart from the beanstalk and the sharp axe. The trouble with beanstalks and sharp axes is they can't speak, which means they didn't say anything during the story, but everyone else did, including Jack Beechwistle. Mrs. Peters put the book down when Jack Beechwistle started fee fi fo fuming. She said just because the hero in the story happened to be called Jack too, there was no excuse for silliness or shouting. Jack B. Sussel is always being silly and shouty and rude. Anyway, he did say sorry to Daniel in the end, so we will still get stories at school next Friday afternoon. I hope Jack B. Sussel doesn't. I hope he has to stand outside the classroom and be really sorry. Because I don't think he was sorry at all to Daniel Banus. Neither does my best friend, Gabby. Chapter 3. On the way home from school after our Jack and the Beanstalk story, Gabby and me pretended we were giants too. Gabby changed her name to Gabby the Great, and I changed my name to Daisy the Enormous. I couldn't think of a giant word that begins with D. Neither could my mom, apart from dinosaur. But Daisy the Dinosaur didn't sound right, plus dinosaurs aren't like giants. Well, they are giant, but they don't look like giant. So I went for enormous. Pretending to be giants is brilliant fun. Gabby and me did great big giant footsteps instead of normal ones, all the way home. We pretended the cracks in the pavement were roads. We pretended that all the ants by our feet were cars and all the giants in the air were helicopters. That's what happens when you are a giant. Everything around you goes really teensy because you're so tall and high up. Someone had thrown an orange squash garden on the pavement, so we pretended it was a really tall building. And then we trod on it. Then Gabby saw some chewed up chewing gum on the pavement and pretended it was a really big mountain. And then she trod on that too. The trouble with pretending chewed up chewing gum is a mountain is if you tread on it, it gets stuck to your shoe. Really stuck. Especially when it's a hot day. Mom said that on hot days, things warm up in the sunshine. And when they warm up, they go all soft and sticky. Especially things like chewing gum. You should never tread on chewing gum on a hot day, especially chewed up chewing gum. Actually, mom said it's probably better not to tread on chewing gum at all, even on cold days. Gabby said she had no choice because she had changed her name again. This time she was called Gabby the Mountain Crusher, and so when she saw the mountain, she just had to tread on it. Tread on it. Mom said she would have to be Gabby the foot scraper now because the only way to get the chewing gum off would be to scrape the bottom of her shoe along the pavement all the way home. She did look funny. When we got to Gabby's house, Gabby and I promised we would play Giants all weekend. I said I would go to Gabby's house to play on Saturday and Gabby said she would come to my house to play on Sunday. That's when my mom told me we could only play Giants together on Saturday. Because on Sunday, me and my mom were going to my nanny and grandpa's for lunch. In our new second-hand car. 
Me and my mom quite often go to nan my nanny and grandpa's for Sunday lunch. Mom says it gives her a break. I'm not sure from what from them. Hmm. The trouble with going to my nanny and grandpa's for Sunday lunch is sometimes I wish Gabby could come with us. I really wished Gabby could come with us this Sunday because playing Giants prob properly takes two days at least. But Mom said Gabby wouldn't be able to come with us this Sunday. She wanted to get used to driving our new second-hand car before she started giving people lifts in it. That's the trouble with new second-hand cars. Green ones aren't as easy to drive as red ones. I said that if Gabby and me put our seatbelts on and closed our eyes all the way there, we would be fine. But Mom said that wouldn't be necessary. And anyway, we would have to give Nanny more notice. My nanny makes the best gravy in the world. Plus, she gives me loads of roast potatoes. Trouble is, though, if you don't tell her at least six weeks before that someone else is coming to lunch, she'll get into a bit of a tiz. Gabby says her nanny gets her roast potatoes out of a bag in the freezer and her Yorkshire puddings. But my nanny makes her Yorkshire puddings and potatoes herself. I love going to my nanny's and grandpa's house any day of the week. They've got a shed with real mice holes in, plus they've got apple trees and palm trees, and a wheelbarrow. The trouble with wheelbarrows is sometimes they squeak. My grandpa's wheelbarrow really squeaks. He said, it isn't the wheelbarrow, it's the mice in the shed trying to trick us. But it isn't, it's my grandpa trying to trick me. Sometimes my grandpa puts me in the wheelbarrow and takes me to London. Not real London, pretend London. We pretend that he's my taxi driver and then we, we off we go. London is the patio and Buckingham Palace is the swing set next to the red flowers. Going to nanny and grandpa's is one of the best things in the world. Except for when I do something really, really wrong and get really, really told off. Like today. Mom said we'll be lucky if we ever get invited back to Nanny and Grampy after what I did today. Even if I did say sorry. And even if it was a giant sorry. Chapter 4. The trouble with playing giants with Gabby is she always wants to be the giantist. When I got to her house yesterday morning, I told her that I had changed my name to Daisy the Ginormous and that I was definitely the giantest giant because I had grown a hundred meters higher in the night. Trouble was, that made her really jealous. So every time I said how tall I was, she said she was the same and a bit. The trouble with me saying I was a hundred skyscrapers high was Gabby. She was a hundred skyscrapers high and a bit. The trouble with me saying I was two million trees high was Gabby said she was two million trees high and a bit. And the trouble with me saying I was a zillion big red bushes high and a bit was Gabby said, then said she was a zillion big red bushes high and two bits which made me really cross. So I changed my name to Daisy the Giantist and no returns. Ha! Gabby had to be the smallest giant after that. Mind you, even then she still said she would only be the smallest giant by half a bit. Sigh. Gabby's always doing things like that. When her mom and dad heard us arguing in the lounge, they came in and said we'd have to play something else if we couldn't stop arguing. But there was no way we were going to ever play anything else. Playing giants is far too much fun. So we stopped arguing, and we went upstairs to play giants in Gabby's bedroom. Gabby's bedroom is perfect for playing giants in. We pretended her bed was our castle, her wardrobe was the castle kitchen, and her pillows were white fluffy clouds. You need white fluffy clouds on the floor to pretend your castle is really high up. Then we did a giant magic spell on all of Gabby's toys and turned them into really good gianty things. We had much better things than a hen that lays golden eggs. We had a teddy that gives us golden money, a monkey that laid golden bananas, 
a dolly that cried golden tears, and a golden dice that made everything six times more golden if you threw a six. Except the trouble with sixes is they're a bit hard to get. So we changed it into ten times more golden, whatever number we threw. In about five minutes, we were rich. The trouble with being rich is Gabby always wants to be richest. Gabby said she was definitely the richest giant because the magic monkey had laid a bigger bunch of golden bananas for her than for me. But I told her that the magic dolly who cried golden tears and done a ginormous, enormous teardrop for me, plus the teddy had given me a whole bank full of golden money, which made me the richest. Then we started arguing again. The trouble with arguing again is it made Gabby's dad come into the bedroom. When he looked around the door at us, he did a giant huff and puff and said, What now? I don't think he was pretending to be a giant. His huff and puff just came out that size. Before I could say anything, Gabby said I wasn't being fair. She had let me the biggest giant, and now I wanted to be the richest giant as well. Which wasn't true. It's not my fault if the magic dolly did bigger gold and tears for me, or if the magic teddy had been to the bank. But Gabby's dad folded his arms and did another giant tough and puff. Then he went on Gabby's side and asked me if I wouldn't mind letting Gabby be the richest giant, seeing as I was the tallest giant. So I had to say yes. She could be the richest giant, but only by half a golden banana. Chapter 5 once we'd sorted out who was the richest giant and who was the tallest giant, we got on really well. Gabby changed her name to Mary the Massive, and I changed mine to Tina the Terrifically Tall. Gabby's dad said he'd never heard of a lady giant before, and he was sure a lady giant would be much scarier than a man giant. But he was wrong. Lady giants aren't scary at all. Lady giants are really beautiful and really kind. The trouble with man giants is they look really ugly and fierce. So everyone gets scared of them. In Mrs. Peter's stories, normal sized people run away from man giants all the time. That's because the man giant always has hair coming out of his noses and ears. Plus, he has bobbly bits all over his face, too, and wonky teeth. If men giant or makeup or a hat, proper washes with paper soap, proper soap, or went to the dentist and brushed their hair a bit more. They probably look much nicer. Much nicer than everyone would have run away. Gabby says it's because giants are so big that people run away from them. But she's wrong because people don't run away from trees, do they? And they're one of the biggest things you can get. Someone else who is big and fierce in Mrs. Peter's stories is the troll. The trouble with trolls is they don't live anywhere nearly as nice as the castle in the sky. Trolls live under smelly old bridges. The trouble with living under smelly old bridges is it makes you smell smelly and old too. It makes you smell like of sweet seaweed and fish plus the river floats. You're going to get really wet socks. The trouble with wet socks is they really smell, especially smelly old trolls' wet socks. If I'd been a Billy Gogruff, I'd have waited till the river flooded to cross the bridge safely. I'd have sneaked up to the bridge and quickly poured loads of shampoo and bubble bath into the river. That way, the shampoo and bubbles would have cleaned the troll who was hiding underneath. Plus, when the water got really high, the soap suds would have gone right into his eyes so he couldn't see. If a troll can see you, it's easy peasy lemon squeezy to cross his bridge without being eaten. Trouble is, I'm not sure if billy goats use shampoo. Princesses who lives in towers don't. Mrs. Peters told us about one in a fairy story. Her name was Rapunzel, which is a really bad name for a princess and really long too. But not as long as her hair. Rapunzel's hair was the longest in the world, which means she must have been an expert on shampoos. Whenever she let her hair down to let Princess climb up to see her, it was always really nice and golden and shiny. It never had any tangles, ever. 
The trouble with the tangles is they really hurt, especially if your mom yanks too hard with a hairbrush. I'm not sure if the princesses if the princess in the tower had a mom. If she did, she didn't live there. The princess had to do all her own washing and brushing and hair drying, so she must have known a lot about shampoos and conditioners. My mom always makes me have shampoo and conditioners. I still sometimes get tangles, though. In her bathroom in our castle in the sky, Gabby and me had a cupboard full of giant bathroom things including bubble bath that made bubbles the size of the world. We had giant singing soap, giant musical toothbrushes, and giant cotton buds that did a dance when you clicked your fingers. Except the trouble with clicking your fingers is Gabby can't do it. So we clapped our hands instead. I was the loudest clapper and Gabby was second loudest. Except she said her claps were the giantest. But we decided not to argue about it. I definitely had the biggest lipstick though. My giant lipstick was a hundred meters long. The trouble with giant lipsticks is once you've done your lips, there is still loads left over. So after we made ourselves look really beautiful, we used them to decorate the castle. Gabby colored the castle walls orange with her lipstick, and I colored the castle roof red with mine. But even once, we colored all the doors and floors too. We still had some giant lipstick lips left over, so we colored the dungeon in as well. Once our lipsticks had run out, we were really hungry again, so we ate some chocolate skyscrapers. Chocolate skyscrapers are a giant's favorite sweet. They look like chocolate flakes, but they're as big as the actual skyscrapers you see on telly. Ja Gabby said she wished a real giant would eat a chocolate skyscraper right above her house. Then when she he bite into it, giant crumbs would crumble off, fall through the clouds, and land right in her back garden. Then we'd have all the chocolate we would we could ever want for life. I said I'd rather the giant brought a giant strawberry dip dab and then sneezed on it. Then all the sherbet would fly out of the giant's packet, fall through the clouds, and cover our gardens like snow. We could play snowball with sherbet if it would roll into a ball. Gabby said a giant's sherbet wouldn't roll into a ball unless his sneeze had made it really sticky. That's the trouble with Giant's Sherbet. You go off it after that. That's the end of this channel. If you liked it, please click many likes and subscribe Reading Club. I'll come back later with a new and improved channel. Bye, everybody.